and welcome to this um, Google Hangout about the new um, CADSoft version 7.3 that was launched recently. Um, this uh, Hangout features Ed Robledo from CADSoft and also Robin Coleman from Element 14 and myself, I'm Jen Patterson from Element 14 as well. Um, so we're going to go through an overview of CADSoft version 7.3 and also do a short demo of some of the new functionality of the software. Um, I've enabled the Q&A functionality on the Hangout, so if you'd like to ask any questions, please feel free to do so. <clears throat> I'm just going to do that um, directly from um, Google's website, just so that everybody understands um, how they can do that. Please feel free to ask any questions that you have. So in the bottom right-hand corner of the viewing window, um, you can click Ask a New Question. You type in your question and click Submit. It's as simple as that, um, and we'll pick those up and, and ask them live on air and answer as many as we can get around to. So um, I'm going to hand over straight over to Robin. He's going to give you a quick overview, and then he's going to hand over to Ed, who's going to give you a demo. Over to you, Robin. Thanks, Jen. Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Robin Coleman, um, and I just wanted to kind of give a little introduction to to the new release of Eagle. Uh, uh, we, we recently were launched Eagle version 7. Point May, um, uh, and um, we'll continue to, to invest in Eagle as we go through the year uh, and into next year as you know, part of our proposition for the software perspective. Um, what you'll see um, in Eagle versions feature enhancements, and actually what we've done to get to that point is we went back to our user base and asked those users uh, what they would like to see in the products now and in the future. So in 7.3 is a reflection of, of customers' feedback, and we'll continue to develop the products into the future with that same methodology. Anyway, enough from me. I'm going to hand over to Ed Robledo, who's one of the technical leads at CAPSoft. He's actually based in sunny Florida. Uh, uh, so, Ed, over to you to walk folks through um, Eagle 7.3. Hi. Thank you, Robin. Greatly appreciate. Thanks for the introduction and giving us some basic information of why actually these improvements were, were added to this latest maintenance release. Just want to let everybody know if you already a uh, registered Eagle version 7 user, uh, the 7.3 update is a free update. So uh, you could go ahead and download and use your existing license to go ahead and take care of, of updating your system now. Um, let me go ahead and I'm going to start my presentation just with a few slides um, to give you an overview or an idea of, of what has been um, um, improved under the hood of Eagle. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and I'll bring up my, my my PowerPoint here as well. I want to keep the Google Plus ahead of me as well. Okay, very well. So um, if everybody could see my, my screen, um, one of the most exciting and, 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 and as Robin indicated earlier in regards of the survey was uh, was uh, the implementation of having a version of Eagle that would natively work in a 64-bit environment. Um, so after a lot of work, uh, the developers were actually able to do this. So now, uh, you, instead of having three options to download Eagle, you're going to also have the 32-bit version as well as the 64-bit version. The 64-bit version is going to take full advantage of, of its native format in a 64 bit environment. The 32 bit worked just fine in a 64 bit, but it was working some sort of like in a compatibility mode. So it was not really taking full advantage of all of these resources. Also, uh, using a 64 bit version, as we more and more of our users within the Linux operating system grow, will no longer have dependencies um, which need to uh, be acquired externally. With this new 64-bit version, all of the dependencies that are necessary are 100% within the actual product itself. So it will natively work. Uh, you'll get a, a, a better installation experience as well as performance experience as well. Also, under um, the hood, we also did was um, we were using a much earlier version of our, of our uh, user interface drivers, which we actually use Qt. 
Um, so now we're actually using a, the latest revision of QT, which is QT5. Uh, this allows uh, the user to experience a much faster type of response time. Um, it's a little snappier, it's quicker the way it goes. It, it has a, a much better stability. It also sets, sets the appropriate groundwork as operating systems will continue to improve with time. This version is going to be 100% compatible with any updates that Windows as well as Mac users will, will be experiencing as we go along. Okay? So this is kind of all of the improvements that have been done to Eagle underneath the hood. Now I'm going to actually go live with Eagle to uh, provide you some demonstrations of actually what was done uh, within Eagle. Okay? So the first thing we want to demonstrate is this is the Eagle control panel. This is the, the very first screen that shows up once you install and execute Eagle. Uh, if you notice here, there's several uh, drop-down trees that we have available, and this one called documentation was not available in our earlier versions of Eagle. Now this gives you 100% access to all of our manuals or any type of write-ups. The ones that I would like to bring up um, or be able to accent here is the layer setup one. This is an extremely useful uh, document folder. If you're going to have a, a layer stack up that is going to include most probably four layers or greater, this document will allow you to uh, see how you configure blind BS and buried BS and so forth. It gives you a really nice explanation and multiple examples. We actually include the manual as well as the tutorial uh, available in English as well as in German as well. Also, <clears throat> in this version of, of Eagle, uh, within the libraries, okay, so if I uh, expand the library tree and I go here to where it says LBR, uh, for the element 14, we've included now a link which will give you access to all uh, uh, the entire content of the libraries that are now available um, uh, through element 14. This is actually the landing page. I'll just let it refresh. And this landing page that Element 14 has created, they've built around 40,000 components that are now available. And all uh, they have been categorized um, by, um, <clears throat> by manufacturer. Extremely convenient. And there's some really nice commentary going along in regards of these libraries that I, I strongly suggest you may want to go ahead and join them as well. Okay. Now, also, what we did is the actual libraries that Eagle comes with uh, the libraries actually are categorized in, in, they were categorized only in two formats. So let me go ahead and expand one of the libraries that we have here. One of the most common libraries is 74XX. And you see a list of, uh, of devices which gives you access to the schematic symbol as well as the package and the multiple um, variants for packages that are available. This was always available in Evo version 7. But what did change was you could see the devices and the packages, but you could not see the schematic symbols. So now what we've done is that we've added the small detail here. So we have your devices, your packages. And now you could expand the library tree to be able to see the different symbols that exist in a library. This was rather difficult in earlier versions. You could, you could see the package and the symbol, but you couldn't isolate the symbol by itself. So with this method, it gives the user, makes it that much easier for the user to identify symbols when he's actually searching for a component. Also, um, <clears throat> if we go ahead and do a, um, a right click on our component that we're uh, looking at, you can do a right click, you get many options. You could actually add it to a schematic if you have a schematic open. You could open up the actual library, what's created or copy it to an existing library. So if I have a library that already exists and I wish to copy this component into that library, I now have the convenience to do it directly for the control panel. Let me just do a small demonstration about this. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new library. It takes me a few seconds. This is a brand new library that I've created <coughs> back here. And if I want to make a duplicate of this component, that exists in this library and I want to put it in an existing library that I have open up in the background, I could go ahead and do a right click, select a right click and say copy that component to a library and now that component shows up on a brand new a library that I actually am, I'm working with. Okay? 
So that's one of the nice enhancements that we did on 7.3. Also, um, <clears throat> also what we also, um, I have a question from Paul. I'll go ahead and um, I'll address that question in a few seconds when I get to that stage. So you just give me a few seconds and I'll get there. Okay. Also, um, within the library, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up a library. And this is one of the most, ex a very exciting update that has been done to Eagle version uh, 7.3 is when you would open up a library, <coughs> an existing library or uh, any library in Eagle, I'm going to go ahead and open up a library here. And it automatically opens up to the table of contents. All of the information in, uh, in this table of content gives our users now an, a broad perspective of the entire content of a library. What does it contain? Also, it gives you, it allows you to see the dependencies uh, that are um, that have been created in this library. And I'll explain that right now. Now, if you look at my screen now, I have three columns. The one on the left is our devices. The one in the center is our packages, our physical footprint. The all the way on the right we have our schematic symbols, which are our schematic symbol representations. And all the way on the left we have our devices. For those that don't know, maybe you go very well. A device is basically the union of a package of a symbol. I'm just going to go ahead and open up one of my devices. That way you could um, more or less take a look. I'm going to do a right click on one of the devices. I'll click on edit. And you notice that here now I could see the relationship between my schematic symbol and my physical footprint that I have here to the right hand side. Let me go ahead and expand this a little bit. So I have this footprint related to this schematic symbol. That is what devices do. Okay? I could have multiple footprints going to the exact same schematic symbol. As you can see here, I could have a quad flat plaque, I could have an SO14. They're all pointing to the exact same uh, schematic symbol. In earlier versions of Eagle, I would actually have to go one by one. So here I would see my list of devices. Here I would see my list of packages, and here I would see my list of symbol. With the new table of content, I could see the entire spectrum of the content of my library and, uh, categorized by devices, packages, and symbols. As I already explained to you, our packages and our symbols are directly tied to create the device. Now it's really important to know what are the dependencies of a device. In other words, what packages and what symbols are being used Okay, what symbols and packages are being used to build a device. So to see those dependencies, it's really easy now. I could highlight any of the devices. I could just do a simple right mouse click, and I could see what packages are being used in that device. So there's a DIL-14, an LCC, as well as an SO14. In addition to that, I could actually also see what schematic symbols are being used to create the device for this component as well. This is extremely useful information that the end user may need when he's actually working on the Eagle libraries. In addition to being able to see the dependencies, you could duplicate, you could rename components, you could actually remove them. That way they're no longer available in this library. If I do the same thing for uh, the column for packages, I could do a right click. I could have the exact same um, um, uh, tools unnecessary in the context menu. So I could either edit the component, duplicate it, remove it, I could do an update of the actual component if it's been updated within a different library. I could edit the description and the device sets is exactly on what is the device that is actually using this physical footprint. So it makes it that much easier to navigate within the library now as well. Okay, So um, the implementation of this table of content, I just can't tell you how exciting we are about it. It's extremely useful. Um, it's going to make manipulation within the library. Uh, editor that much easier for our users as well. Okay, so let me just go back to the control panel <coughs> to tell you a little bit more of enhancements that we actually done to the actual product. Okay, so uh, I'm back in the Eagle control panel. I'm gonna uh, yes uh, minimize my library access. I'm gonna expand my project access from the control panel here. Give it a few seconds to load. Okay, I'm gonna go to the example files. In this latest version, 7.3, we also are now including uh, an example design. This is, includes the schematic as well as the circuit board of uh, the TI Launchpad, the, the 4310F5529LP. And you could actually preview 
um, uh, this board and as well as the schematic from within um, from within Evo. So this this kind of it's a very useful. Um, uh, the TI Launchpad has become a standard in the industry when it comes to um, development kits as well. So we've been able to include it in this version of Evo. Now, if you're going to open up a brand new board, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and open up a brand new board. Okay, and this is yes, uh, uh, a circuit board, an example circuit board that we have, and uh, I will address here and we're in regards of the outer router. When it came out to Evo version seven, <clears throat> we 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 uh, implemented a topological router in which one of our developers dedicated all of his time. Um, uh, to uh, create an algorithm based on the uh, the Noli uh, theorem, in which a topological, which takes into consideration the graphical or the geographical placement of the components on the board, um, and it optimizes um, its you uh, its placement and advantage of making the decisions necessary for the outer router. Now. Um, now, in this uh, version of Eagle 7.3, the topological router was already implemented. But now, uh, with the latest update of 7.3, what we've been able to do is that we were able to optimize um, the, the topological router, which we refer to as the top router. This top router has now been, its algorithm has been improved to be able to recognize uh, a better grid that needs to be used, the least amount of transitions, and it speeds up the actual uh, uh, algorithm itself to give you uh, a best performance within a 64-bit environment. So, Paul, well, basically, yeah, we did some improvements onto the topological router, and um, depending on the type of design and the environment that you're working, you most probably will see that it will be stable and it will give you um, a better results as well. So that should take care of that question, Paul. Okay. Now, also. <clears throat> um, in this uh, latest version of Eagle, uh, we, we had a lot of requests for some sort of a, a render in 3D of my design. <clears throat> okay. So, okay. So, um, uh, a lot of users needed to be able to upload their design files because we, we're noticing that there is a, a lot of uh, designers having a need to transfer their circuit board designs into a mechanical application. That way they could see, make sure that the actual design that they're doing, the circuit board they're working on, actually fits in whatever housing unit the circuit board is intended to be used in. So for then, uh, we worked uh, extensively with uh, a company called Simplified Solutions to come up with a very reasonable price as well as a very reasonable and extremely useful solutions. <clears throat> in Eagle 7.3, once you update, you're going to notice on the top screen, on the top toolbar, you're going to notice a button that says the IDF button. Now, if I click on the IDF button, it's going to come up with a menu, which has multiple options. This is our IDF to 3D interface that we have uh, been able to work. It works really nice. It's really easy to use as well. Now, if I use, what this does is that it generates something called an IDF file. An IDF file is, is referred to as an intermediate data file. This file takes into consideration all of your board dimensions and your component dimensions and represents each one of your components as a cube or as a placeholder. Okay? And it creates the IDF file. The IDF file is actually two files. Okay? So if I click on the IDF file, it's asking me where to put it. I'm just going to put it in the same file wherever my board is located. Okay, it's going to go ahead and create them, and this has created the IDF file. Now, that IDF file is going to be located in the exact same board file, uh, exact same the folder wherever my board is located, and the IDF file is actually two files. One is my board outline file, which is the EMM file, and the other one is the EMP file, which is your component placement. So when you run the IDF ULP, and you just want to store it on your hard drive, you would select <clears throat> the option for, uh, let me go ahead here, generate idea files. Okay. Okay. So here I could generate the idea mm -hmm. files and actually store them on our hard drive. 
In our earlier versions, we the idea file would automatically get uploaded. Now you can actually store it on your hard drive. Now the next um, uh, step that you would do is if you want to actually view this in 3D, you would click on this uh, button here where it says Build 3D. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that one. And what it does is that it creates my idea file, the EMM and the EMP file are actually now built and automatically they're pushed onto the simplified solutions. Those two files are automatically pushed into the simplified solutions website in which is the tool that we're going to be using to create your 3D render. And this is the interface. I already have my credentials already implemented uh, so it automatically will, will go ahead and, and push my IDF files. And here's my file. Um, so, uh, uh, it already loaded the file. Give me a second. It's just, um, just finishing the, the render. Okay, here we go. Okay, so, it's, it automatically loaded my ENM file and the EMP file. You could do this manually, but from Eagle, it just makes it that much easier to transition to it as well. Okay, uh, it has a, a slew of options that you can that you could actually modify, and there is a full video um, demonstration of it as well as a well as a quick guide to it as well. So I'm going to go here and go to, uh, here's a list of all the components that are actually exist on my board. You could change um, the component if this is not the component that you wanted to use or the model that you wanted to use. It's really easy to go ahead and modify it. Um, you could build your own library component, uh, tools or component. Here is a list of libraries that he has of 3D models. They're actually classified according to functionality or their uh, or or their physical aspects of it. So it has a nice library. Now this allows you to upload your your own components, your three D models. So you could build your own library if you wanted to as well. So here where it says three D models, I have I'm using right now all of the ones by Simplified Solutions, but I could switch to my own library if I did have one. I don't have no content there or a shared library if I was in a community-based collaborative working environment and I wanted to share my library with other uh, users of this website. Now, once I've uploaded my components, let's say you're already satisfied with the selection, the mapping from IDF to, to the Simplified Solutions, it does a really good job because it takes into consideration the dimensions on the silt screen layers as well as the lead spacing, the actual build of 3D models. It does a really good job. It looks really nice. Now that I've satisfied with my component placements, I could go ahead and click on here where it says Generate 3D. Now while this works, um, one of the options is to be able to create this 3D render in something called PDF format. Okay, And this is the PDF file that you will get. This entire session um, is actually free access that I've been able to demonstrate so far. Uh, this is a portable file, of course, in PDF, and it allows you to rotate. You'll be able to see your component placements as well as the holes that exist on the board. And this is what you get when you actually uh, create a PDF. And this is absolutely free, so you could start the process from Eagle and create your portable file uh, absolutely free. Now, we also have two more exports that could be done from this. And this is these two right here. One of them is called step files and STL files. The step file is the most common file format structure that is used for mechanical applications. This is a 100% compatible file which any mechanical engineer will be able to uh, import into his mechanical application. Mechanical applications such as a Libre, uh, such as a Pro-E or SolidWorks, which is the most common request that we were getting from. So now this file is 100% compatible. You could import it into your mechanical application and uh, the mechanical engineer now could build whatever housing unit he's going to be using. Now when I get these download options, I'm only getting these download options because I currently don't, uh, I, I have a subscription so it allows me to download these files. If you wanted to download these files and then we have an option by which you could purchase a subscription model for this. Okay, So this is how the interface works. As you could see, it's pretty clean, it's fairly transparent this site is extremely easy to use. Now I have one more question here. Um, it says, what is the performance difference when seen running on Eagle on a 32-bit environment versus a 64-bit environment? Excellent. Good question. Um, <clears throat> okay. What happens is that 
uh, we only had a 32-bit version. So when anybody, uh, it is very common now for designers to be working on computers that 100% support 64-bit operating system. So we were always working in some sort of a compatibility mode. So it was not taking full advantage of, of all of the resources that the operating system had to offer. With the 64-bit environment, you're going to be able to notice that the program is going to be able to work very stable. It's going to be able to actually take advantage of all of the resources when it comes to virtual resources as well as the hardware resources, uh, especially the auto router. Since the auto router understand it's a multi-channel, multi-threaded auto router, it actually runs a session of the auto router in each core. So the performance enhancement is actually very great. It's really nice. It's all going to be really dependent on what you're running on the background. So that should be able to take care of that question. So um, that takes care of this demonstration. My name is Ed. Uh, please contact us uh, anytime if you have any other questions, okay? Thank you very much for being here. Thanks very much, Ed. And thanks very much, Robin, as well, for your input. And um, thanks for the questions as well. They were, um, they were great. Thanks for asking those. Um, so I guess it just leads me to kind of close out and just to say that if you would like to buy um, the CADSOFT version 7.3, you can do so through um, Newark Element 14 in North America, Farnell Element 14 in Europe, and Element 14 in Asia Pacific. And for any more information that you um, need, you can go to the Element 14 community um, and you should be able to get um, plenty of information from there as well. So I hope this... Um, Hangout has been useful and interesting um, and we'll see you again uh, for the next in the series shortly. Thanks very much. Bye.